Happy Tuesday! We are so delighted that you are here joining us this afternoon um, to talk through some off-campus resource information for you as a parent and family member in order to support your student through um, whether it's their first off-campus housing search uh, for next year or it's their um, third and they are just looking for another opportunity or another location for them to live off campus. Um, so it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, today's webinar host, uh, and that is Janine McGee, who is our Assistant Director of Off-Campus Resources. Thanks so much for being here, Janine, and um, we appreciate your time. Yeah, good afternoon, guys. I'm glad that you are all taking some time out of your day to think about this and get started on getting some information. Uh, we know that this is a decision that and a process that students and their families are going to be involved in. So we want to make sure um, that everyone involved in that process um, feels confident and feels secure that, they're, that they've done their research, that they know what they should be uh, looking for, what they should be asking, so that they can feel confident when you do sign a lease, so that you do feel secure, because we want your student to be um, in a place that they can be satisfied and content. Um, if not for that entire year, hopefully for subsequent years after that. Um, so our office provides a lot of educational opportunities for students throughout the academic year, and we want to be available as you and your student have questions or concerns. Um, this is just some information to help you get started on that process, um, and we are happy to walk you through uh, things as you have quite as you have questions that come up or uh, things that you want to know what you should be looking for we're happy to help with that the absolute best place to start is going to be our website it is at offcampushousing.ua.edu uh, there are literally hundreds of properties listed on this website um, it's important to know that this website is really for informational purposes. So this website is, if not all, almost all of the options in town. Uh, what that does mean though is that for an office of two, we have not necessarily been in every unit in this property. We, we may, it may have been a few months since we have been to some of these properties. Um, so we have not necessarily vetted these properties. Um, students have different experiences at lots of different complexes and rental companies. Um, and so being on our website is not an endorsement from us that your move-in experience is going to be exactly as you had hoped or that uh, their customer service is going to be exactly as you would expect or anticipate. These are purely for informational purposes so that you understand all of the options that are available here in the Tuscaloosa community. Um, this is a screenshot of our website. You'll see there's housing. Uh, that's where the main property search function is going to be. Uh, there's also roommates, and we, we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, roommates, your student would need to do that. They'll need to log in uh, with their Crimson email account information. It is free, but they do have to have that information. Um, but they can post a roommate profile. They can search other UA students who have created a roommate profile, uh, but they do have to have that behind a password. Um, so that's another feature of our website that is available. Um, underneath resources, for instance, you'll see lots of checklists, a move-in inspection sheet, a monthly budget, lots of resources for you and your student to go through so that you can really feel like you've, you've done your research, you know what questions to ask, and you know how to have the best possible experience uh, being a tenant in one of these properties in Tuscaloosa. Some of the things you may see as your student is researching properties around town, they may see this particular seal. Um, you may see it noted next to property names on our website. Uh, this program is called Crimson Choice. It is run through the university, but it is not managed by our office here in Off-Campus Resources. Um, it's a, it's a version of a building inspection. We want to make sure that everyone understands what Crimson Choice means and what information that gives you and basically what that seal that you might see will entail. Um, it's 
it's an inspection and properties ask for this. So it's voluntary. Um, properties ask for these inspectors to come by and we've listed some of the sample criteria here. It's gonna be things about, um, are there handrails or banisters at every stairwell? Um, are the sidewalks evenly paved? Um, are there smoke detectors in the correct places? Um, can the windows be opened from inside so that that window could be used as a fire exit? Uh, these are the kinds of things that Crimson Choice is looking for as part of their inspection process. You'll note that I did not say um, the frequency of the shuttle or is an early move-in available. Uh, those are not things that Crimson Choice is looking for. Uh, so you can go to the Crimson Choice website and see the full set of criteria if you want to have a much better understanding of what that seal will entail. Um, I did say it is voluntary. So just because a property does not display the Crimson Choice seal does not mean that they would not pass the inspection. It just means that they have not asked the university to send one of those inspectors to do the inspection. So that's just something important to understand about what Crimson Choice means in terms of um, what the university has looked for uh, in order to give them that designation. Like I said, we want to do a lot of informational events. Uh, this is just one of this is one of our most popular ways that students get in touch with us. We host housing fairs uh, and we invite. Uh, properties, a lot of them are on the website. Uh, we'll have probably about 30 properties at these housing fairs and they all set up um, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. All of these dates except for one are Wednesdays. Um, and students then can come through and ask the same questions or kind of get a feel of what questions to ask of these properties, uh, whether it's about what's the shuttle schedule or it might be, do you offer an early move-in option? Um, these are questions that we that could be your students or your family's deal breaker as they look at properties. And so this is really a good way to get started having those conversations. Uh, with your student. This is a great time for them to ask multiple properties so that they kind of can narrow down their search from there. Um, so we will be at the Ferguson Center on these days. The next one is actually next Wednesday, October 4th. That's going to be a pretty big fair, but if your student, if you guys are still waiting on information about possibly a co-op for spring semester or um, you know, maybe your student is applying to be a resident advisor or really wants to return to campus for another year for housing. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why you have to start this process in October. Um, but we will continue to have these events throughout the year so that if your student's ready to start this process in January, we still have an event on the way. Uh, so we will continue to do this um, throughout the year so that we are there to provide that service whenever you and your student are ready to get started in this process. There's some other events that we're going to plan. Um, later in October, we're going to do an event that we call our bus tours. Uh, we're going to work with properties that have shuttles. Some of them actually don't have shuttles, but they're going to stay open a little bit later on October 16th and 17th and make sure that they have someone that can do model room tours or answer questions from students. And this event is based out of our transit hub here on campus. So students will basically be able to hop on a bus and go see a property and then come back to the hub and then hop on a different bus and go see a different property. So it's hopefully an opportunity for them to see five or six properties in one night. Uh, we do want your student, if you're not able to come to campus, we definitely want your student to be able to view these properties. Um, it's always best to see if you can actually put eyes on a property. You will definitely feel more confident in your decision if, if your student has visited the property. Um, there's just some things that you will not learn until you're on the property. Um, you know, whether it's, is the hallway door propped at the end of building two, or um, maybe the community is actually really loud on a Tuesday night. Uh, depending on what your student is looking for and what kind of environment they're gonna thrive in, those may be important things for you guys to find out early on. We will also hold some other um, 
housing fairs inside the residential communities. Those dates and times are listed here. Um, if your student is not able to make our Wednesday kind of spanning lunchtime availability, these are some options that we will also have available in the late afternoon through evenings at other times. Um, it, and if your student cannot make November 13th, but they live in Presidential Village, they are absolutely invited to the one in January at Ridgecrest South or the one in February at Berg. Um, there's no real, um, there's no real rule about that, but these are where we'll be located on these evenings as just another opportunity for your students to learn about what options are available to them. There's some information we want everyone to know. Um, as you get started in this process, we think it's important. Um, you know, sometimes parents of students who were here two or three years ago when we didn't necessarily have the same housing market, uh, we didn't necessarily have as many options. Uh, sometimes those parents might tell you something like, if you don't sign a lease in October, there's not going to be anything left. That may have been true three, four, five years ago, but it's certainly not the case now. Most complexes in town will not fill up in October when leasing season typically starts, although we've seen uh, their advertising start to pick up already here in September. Um, again, just a reminder, being on the off-campus website is not an endorsement for the property from the University of Alabama. Uh, we we want to give you a lot of information so that you can do that research and we can absolutely help you through that process. Um, but we want to make sure that you do understand the limitations of our part in your student's relationship with that property. Once that lease is signed, that is a legal relationship between your student and that business. So we want to make sure that everybody's clear about what the university can do as part of that relationship, but also what we can do to help you get prepared for that and make good decisions beforehand so that your student can thrive and be successful and be happy um, with where they choose to live. So if your student is 19 years or older, their signature is the signature of a legal adult in the state of Alabama. And so their signature is legally binding in the state of Alabama. Um, we've had some trouble uh, with, with this. Students sometimes, uh, their co-signer may fall through. But if they have signed that lease, they are still bound to the lease. So that's something important for you to know as the person that may likely be their co-signer. Um, if, if you choose not to be their co-signer or uh, your credit might not be in the right shape for that to be approved, your student is probably still going to be held to that lease if they are 19 years or older when they signed it. Something that's equally as important, we want to make sure that your student is reading the lease. Um, if you have the opportunity, I would strongly encourage you to read the lease before you or your student sign it. Um, there's some very interesting things in leases um, that um, can become problematic later or uh, a, lo a lot of times the, the calls that we get in my office where a student or their parent is upset about something, that information was actually found in the lease, um, that that could be a possibility and what would happen if that was the situation. Um, because of that, uh, you'll, you'll see some things in leases that, that we'll talk about in a minute, but you want to make sure you're getting all your information from the property in writing. Uh, that may include, hey, what is the shuttle schedule? Or, um, so how often is the trash removed from the dumpster? Or, um, at what date is the property gate going to be closed? Um, those are the kinds of things that you want in writing um, before you sign and definitely while you live there. You want to get things from properties in writing while you live there like um, what is the time frame for getting the dishwasher repaired. Um, those are definitely things you want to notify them of in writing and hear from them in writing about what's the time frame and process for those, those issues to be resolved. Um, you'll see this, I've actually pulled the language from one of our local leases, but most of the leases have a clause that say 
that verbal agreements with any member of the property staff are not legally binding. Um, that can sound kind of tricky, but what it really means is that as information changes, or if that staff member was misinformed, if they said it to you verbally and it's not something you got in writing, it's not legally binding. Sometimes that clause actually says nothing outside of this lease is legally binding. Um, so that's definitely something you want to look out for. And it's, again, the reason why we recommend that you get your information from the property in writing whenever possible. So, oh, no, nope, we did that one. Sorry, friends. So just a little bit of information about roommates. I know that this is something you're probably all curious about um, and that you'd like some more information. How does that work off campus? It can work in a lot of different ways off campus. Um, and the biggest factor for how roommates will work is whether uh, that property has a joint lease or an individual lease. So let's take um, these three students, we'll call them Adam, Ben, and Charlie. Um, Adam, Ben, and Charlie met in their freshman compass course and they're going to be best friends and everything's going great. They're going to be best friends for forever and they're going to be in each other's weddings and everything's going to be awesome. So Adam, Ben, and Charlie want to live together next year. They find an apartment and let's say it's listed, generally when it's a joint lease, it's going to list the rent for the entire unit. So it's going to say something like $1,800. Well, you're going to divide that by three and each student's going to pay $600. Now, the lease under a joint lease, there's just one contract for the entire unit. Now, that may mean that it just has Adam's name on it, but it, it might also be that that one contract has all three names listed on it. But Adam, Ben, and Charlie are going to live in this three-bedroom apartment and split the rent, split the utilities, all of these things. Let's say, though, that... Um, next year, Charlie gets a phenomenal internship experience, um, and he's not going to be on campus spring semester. So under a joint lease, that would mean that Adam and Ben are now paying that $1,800 divided by two instead of three, unless Adam and Ben go and find a new third roommate to help split that cost back down. So they would be responsible for finding a new roommate, um, or they take on the risk of the cost getting divided by two instead of three. But they have more control over who is that roommate. Um, under an individual lease, um, these are gonna be the kinds of properties that are more likely to be furnished, and utilities are included, and they have a shuttle. A lot of the larger apartment communities are working on individual leases. And that means that each student has a, a separate contract with the, with the business, with the property. So Adam has a contract for his bedroom and Ben has a contract for his bedroom and Charlie has a lease for his bedroom. Uh, so let's say then that Charlie, under the same circumstances, Charlie's got his awesome internship experience. He's not gonna be there. Adam and Ben do not have to pick up Charlie's share of the rent because their responsibility to the property is just for their one bedroom. So they don't necessarily assume the same risk financially um, in terms of what happens if someone has to jump out or for whatever reason needs to, needs to be living somewhere else. Um, what that does mean though is that let's say that in the spring when students transfer in or they're coming back from abroad, there's this student, we'll call him Daniel, he walks up to the property and says, this is great, I want to live here. The property can assign Daniel to that third space and Adam and Ben didn't necessarily have any choice over it. Um, so less risk, less control. Um, neither one of these situations is bad and they are both popular in town. I mean, you, you'll see lots of different properties doing joint leases and lots of properties doing individual leases. There are clearly pros and cons to both situations, um, but some of it may depend on, are you more comfortable with less risk? Are you more comfortable with more control? Um, so that's something to keep in mind about uh, who your roommates might be 
what does the lease say? And is your lease for one bedroom or is it for a whole apartment? Um, you'll see a lot of properties say that they do roommate matching. Um, their roommate matching, keep in mind, a parent may have filled out that roommate profile. So it may not necessarily be the best indication of what your student's experience in that apartment will be with that other student. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that apartment companies are bound by fair housing discrimination laws, just like real estate companies are. So they cannot necessarily discriminate against, let's say, a non-student. So let's say that your student, you have a UA student, they may be matched with someone and that person may not be a University of Alabama student. It may not be a student at all. That property is bound that that is not something that they can discriminate against. So roommate matching can be great for your students, but it does come with, again, kind of a set of risks and maybe less control. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, University of Alabama students can create roommate profiles on our off-campus housing website. Um, that's free, but they do need that Crimson email account to verify that they're a UA student. Um, so if the idea of the roommate matching is something that kind of makes you nervous, students can go ahead and search for off-campus roommates ahead of time while they're still even doing their apartment search. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, just as another, um, let's just all be on the same page and be aware that it could happen, I've pulled this language from a lease um, here in town, and I did hear from some parents in, early in the summer where this, this did come to pass for these students. We don't hear about this often, but it could happen. This is on the first page of this lease, so, and it's actually in the first paragraph, so hopefully everyone had read it. Unfortunately, the parents that called me had not, but it very clearly says that the property is gonna attempt to assign students that request each other together, but there may be some circumstances where they're not able to do so, and they don't necessarily have to notify the resident of that. Um, what that means is you would find out later in the summer, when you find out what unit you've been assigned to, you would at that time also find out that it, that it may be likely that your roommates are not who you requested. Um, hopefully, properties can still work with you on that, but if they're 100% full, they don't necessarily have any wiggle room to help shift those roommate assignments around, um, and that was the situation that we saw this summer. So even then, even if they say we do roommate matching or we'll absolutely take your roommate requests, they still may not be able to get 100% of those requests in together just based on how um, I mean, it's, it's puzzle pieces, and so in order for things to fit, sometimes um, something has to be shifted, and sometimes that means it's a, it's a roommate request. So it's something everyone should be aware of in those properties where you're asking for roommate requests. There's just a little bit more information I wanted to show you guys out of actual leases that I've seen and read, and these are things that some parents have asked about, and when I go and find it, they're, they're not necessarily happy <laughs> to find that I, that I found this in a lease that they signed. Um, this top one goes back to a previous slide. You know, it says, you understand the entire agreement is this lease and no oral statements are binding. Um, again, it might just mean that the property is misinformed. They could be misinformed about the schedule of 348 ride or um, how quickly they can get back onto campus with their shuttle after game day operations. Um, they may be misinformed about how often the city is coming to pick up trash. Um, these are just things that sometimes their local staff don't always have the best information about it. Um, but again, if you get it in writing, uh, that can help, um, help you get some backup and get some documentation in place. Um, but again, you can always call our office and ask us um, if you hear something from a property that you're not sure about, especially as it relates to a university service like a shuttle or 348 ride. And we can try and help you confirm or verify that information so that you can feel safe and confident with that, that information. 
Speaking of safety, I know that that's something that parents are incredibly concerned about as your students um, continue to live off campus or can maybe move from on campus to off campus. There's some information I wanted to share with you about that. Um, and I think these are just really good examples. Uh, this is actually in one of the leases here locally, and it does say that our security measures are not a guarantee against crime or reduced risk of crime. So, um, you know, just because we have a gate around the complex doesn't mean that we are guaranteeing that there's not going to be a crime. Or just because we have security cameras does not mean uh, that, that we're guaranteeing that there will be less crime. Um, and the other, you know, the second part of this is um, if you think about most of those kinds of things, they're machines, they're equipment. Because they're equipment, they could be tampered with, they could malfunction, maybe they didn't get programmed right. But all of that equipment, it's, it's still not perfect and it still cannot necessarily prevent crime. The best way uh, to make sure that your student is as safe as possible is to make sure that your student has um, a good set of personal habits um, using the Guardian app, um, making sure that you're walking with a buddy um, or someone knows what time you're going to be home. Um, these are things that can help you feel better about uh, your student's safety and help your student feel more safe as they are walking, um, maybe even from their car to their apartment. Um, but again, all of that safety equipment in the world, it's still machines and something could go wrong, the power could go out, lots of things could happen. So you certainly do not want to rely on security equipment as your only measure of crime prevention. So just want to put that out there for you, parents. We know you want your, your students to be safe, uh, but there's a lot of ways we can do that. So here is actually the contact information for our office. Uh, you can call us anytime during business hours. We're available. Uh, we may be speaking to a class right that, right that minute, but um, we are happy to call you back and help you get started in this process. Uh, we are located in Parham. Uh, we're on the first floor of the residence hall. Um, so students can walk in. We've got lots of information available. We want you and your student to feel secure in the information and confident in your decisions. So as you're reading leases, if there's a section that you're unfamiliar with the terminology, we're happy to talk to you about what's the difference between a replacement and a delegate or what is, what is this section on casualty? What does that mean? It's actually not what we all think of as a casualty. It's talking about property damage. Um, so there's a lot of information that we can provide you guys with or, or give you at any point in the process. But, of course, it's always best if we can make sure that, that you feel um, well prepared and confident in these decisions before you sign leases. So, but again, if that, if that happens now or October or if it happens in January or if it happens in April, we are going to be here and we're going to be with you um, to make sure that you understand that and, and you feel good about the decisions you're making. Thank you so much for all this great information, Janine. We really appreciate it. Um, and I know that parents and family members will appreciate the information and will be in touch should they need any further assistance. Um, thank you again for joining us in this webinar. Uh, we appreciate your participation. And uh, next Tuesday, October 3rd, we will be hearing from some academic advisors from throughout mm -hmm. campus to talk about the upcoming registration season, um, talking about spring classes, how your student can be press prepared in order to uh, make sure they get all the classes they need and want for spring semester. So thanks so much. Have a great rest of the week and we'll see you next Tuesday.